So here's the update video on the Fluke 192 scope meter. And this here was the one I was waiting for parts. So what I did was I brought a whole entire donor one that was supposed to be broken, doesn't power on nothing. The problem is it works. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Both channels work, the meter inputs work, everything works on it. The only problem with it is, is of course the display, which they all have that problem now. I did somewhat fix the display, but you can see there's still lines that come back and forth. I actually have to send them out to get them fixed properly because, you know, trying to do it at home with a homemade hot bar, trying to put pressure on it while trying to do it, it's only a temporary fix and it's going to go back to lines again, of course. So the only proper way to do it is there's a company that sends it out and they actually place the cable with new conductive glue and everything like that and that fixes it permanently but it's about 200 bucks to send it out and I'll probably do that the only problem was this one here was supposed to be the parts one for this one and unfortunately it works so I can't you know take a fully working scope <laughs> take the parts out to make one good one and stuff like that would be kind of a waste of instruments especially being the fact that both ADCs and stuff like that work and see there you go another line popped up again they're probably all gonna pop back up again because that's what these displays do but yeah that's a problem because now I'm gonna have to try to find another one of these and hope that it's actually broken so I can get this one going too as well. And the only thing I really need on this one is the jack and I need this front casing because the post and stuff are broken that holds the main board and the keypad assembly to this frame and stuff like that. And the only other thing I can do is I can glue it and just buy the DC jack and that will fix it. But if I want to fix it properly, you got to replace this casing. And the casing by itself is close to 100 bucks and then the DC jack is $95 and stuff like that so that's the reason why I brought a donor one because I was hoping just to take this front and the jack off this one put it on this board since the seller did say that this does not power on but as you can see it powered on without me having to do anything and it even has a brand new battery in it too on top of that so there's nothing wrong with the scope besides just the display so kind of a bummer in a way because now I have to find an actual donor for this one so I can get this one going or I could just sell this for parts or whatever since both ADCs and stuff like that work on this so there's nothing wrong with this one except for the jack is broken itself and if I place the jack the board will be good but man, that kind of sucks because I was actually hoping that this thing was actually broken. And let's go and turn it off. And I'll even show you that both channels are actually working. So let me go and switch this cable over here. I'm going to go and switch it to channel B. All right. And then you turn it on to B just by doing that. And of course, it's going to auto set. And you can also turn on channel A. Well, let me first turn it on, obviously. I gotta turn on the signal gen. Okay, let's go ahead and let's do A, if I remember correctly. Off on A, alright. Okay, and then let's set the trigger too, because I gotta set the trigger for B now. Alright. And there you go, pretty much. And you can see both channels do work. And of course I can switch the square way. Of course I can switch the different pos and arbitrary and so forth. It works perfectly fine and it's not supposed to be working. <laughs> That's the problem. Kind of funny actually. But we'll go and go into, um, we'll put B, we'll turn that off. Oh wait, I gotta have at least one channel on. So we'll turn on channel A. Turn off this one here. We'll go and turn that off. This is funny. <laughs> I was not expecting this to actually work. <laughs> All right, and then we'll go and turn it on. And then of course we gotta hit the trigger. And we'll just go 
trigger on channel A. And there you go, she works perfectly fine. And of course, I can go up and then we're not gonna do the auto, we'll just do it manually. And there you go, you can see she works fine. It's a four megahertz signal, which it's reading correctly actually. It's dead on point, two volt peak to peak, and at 500 milliamps, you got one volt there, one volt there. So, yeah, it's working as it's supposed to, and it's actually pretty dead accurate too. That's the funny part. Let's just go up to, why not? Let's just go up to 25 megahertz, all right? And there you go. It reads it beautifully. Of course, if you do um, square wave, it's going to limit it to actually, uh, let's just go back down. It really doesn't look like a square wave. That's because of this thing here. And also because the cable and stuff like this could cause winging and stuff like that. But if I go down, let's just go down to one megahertz. That probably look a lot better. Okay. And there you go. That looks more like a square wave. And that's at one megahertz. Oh wait, I switched the mode on the other one. How do you get back in the signal? And on this one here, yeah, I remember it's mode. <laughs> there you go. And then we'll go ahead and do ramp, pause, and arbitrary. And you can see it works perfectly fine. <laughs> so that's why I haven't done a video on this Fluke 192 scope meter because it's very hard to find parts for it. And like I said, the DC jack by itself costs $95. Then if you gotta buy the cases, the back side's 50 bucks, the front's about 100 bucks. I mean, everything's expensive on these things because unfortunately Fluke did not provide to normal people the actual parts and stuff like that. So trying to find spare parts for this thing is hard to come by and sellers unfortunately know that. So that's why I decided just to go and spend another $390 for this one here, hoping I could get the parts for it and then, you know, take the good parts out of this one to fix this one and essentially sell this one back for the parts if the ADCs were good then just sell the main board and so forth and keep the rest of the parts or whatever the case is and recoup some of my money back so I'm not having to spend two to three hundred dollars just for a DC jack in a case but this one works perfectly fine so I'm not gonna go and part out a perfectly fine scope I'm just gonna go ahead and fix the LCD on it and keep this one and I may just go ahead and turn around and just sell this one for parts or down the road just keep it around and fix it down the road when I do find another donor cheap that's actually broken <laughs> and then I can use the parts to fix that one but that's the update on the scoop on the fluke 192 scope meter and to show that channel B also works correctly too you can see there feeding a one megahertz two volt peak to peak and that's exactly what it's showing on the display on this Fluke 192 scope meter. It's that inaccurate. The reason why before it wasn't showing accurate because I had it on 10x probe and stuff like that. And I had to go and change the settings and stuff. But as you can see, it's now working. And we'll go do the same thing. You can see your square wave. You can see your ramp. And there you go. And you also got pause. And then you also got your arbitrary. And then go back to sign. And there you go, and let's just go up. Actually, let's go ahead, let's just change this here. Let's go to the max. All right. There you go. See, it's a 25 megahertz signal, and channel B pretty much works correctly as it should, so nothing wrong with this scope pretty much so the only thing i probably can do with this one here is i can hold on to it try to find the parts for it and just go ahead and replace the display on this one this one will be fully working or fix both of them but if i fix both of them i will have to find another donor of course because i'm not gonna buy the parts individually because they just cost too much and i'm not paying some greedy seller 95 dollars for a small dc jack and stuff like that I just won't do that I would rather hack something before I go ahead and do that and 
go ahead and just put another jack on or maybe make the hole bigger or something like that but i'm not gonna go ahead and give some greedy ass seller 95 dollars for a dc jack now one other thing i can do too is <laughs> there you go <laughs> Hopefully that will fix it. <laughs> That's how you fix these, essentially. Just throw a bunch of money at it and hope that it'll work, essentially. Actually, you know, so I could take that money and throw it into a 199 scope meter if I actually want to, but that's essentially how you fix these things because unfortunately the parts are just way too expensive. Here's the final results after playing that conductive, stupid flat flex that goes from the LCD and bonds to the PCB board. And the way they did it was they used the conductive glue to actually bond that, um, you know, strip going to the PCB board. And that always over time ends up working, you know, to way loose the glue ends up becoming either dried up or something and it doesn't make good conductivity to the PCB board. So what I did was I actually just used one large tip to heat while well, one tip I kept that was on it cold and under it I put a piece of silicone to help protect so I don't melt the actual flat flex while going across and I did about 240 degrees now if you're just using the tip itself you don't want to go more than 205 otherwise you're gonna end up melting that cable but what I did was I kept one hot and then following it I kept the cold tip pushing on that silicone strip so I could keep pressure on it while it cools down and stuff like that and I found that actually gave me really good results the only um one I got right there now if I want to go back in there and play around with it I probably could get rid of that line but I'm not going to mess with it again because that wasn't even the hardest part the hardest part was trying to line that zebra strip so that way you don't get you know lined vertically and so forth so I ended up having to, you know, play around the display rod to get it aligned properly and stuff like that. But this is the end result. It came out pretty good, actually. If you look at the meter side, you don't even see the line, so it doesn't bother me. It'll work for now until I get the new display. I am still going to go ahead and get a new display. This was just an experiment to see if I could get this thing more readable and stuff like that. And it is very usable now. But who knows how long it'll last. It's probably going to be a temporary fix, so... Getting a new display will fix it permanently, at least at least for a few years, so that's probably what I'm going to do. But here you go, and that's the end result, pretty much, of this Fluke 192 scope meter. And you're going to have problems with any of these series, pretty much, because they use that um, cheap way, which is that flex cable bonded to the PCB board, and over time, they just come loose and stuff like that. They do it in calculators, they do it in any of these scopes any even multimeters that you use and stuff like that just happens over time i prefer the zebra strip much better because at least the zebra strips and stuff like that you can find replacements and stuff but as far as this bonding goes where they use a hot bar from factory and then they use you know a press to actually do it you know it's kind of a pain in the neck when they do go bad trying to get it fixed and aligned properly but here you go